I recently tweeted a fun fact that got some people into a frenzy, which is that it is quite literally impossible to run out of QR codes. And by that, I do not mean it like there are so many combinations that we would never generate them all until the heat death of the universe. I really mean that there is no such thing as running out of QR codes. The concept does not even apply. But there were plenty of people responding and outright dismissing my point as ravings of a metaphorical lunatic or just plain stupid, saying stuff like, um, actually, QR codes have a maximum size. They can't store infinite data. Shut up. You're misinterpreting what I'm saying. I did not say that they store infinite data or that they were limitless. I said you couldn't run out. That's not the same. And I figured it would be way easier to explain what I mean by all this in video form. Now, as quick context, the reason I tweeted this was basically to make a interesting clarification about the joke that I was quote retweeting, which said, fun fact, QR codes are 80% depleted and will run out around 2025. Now, yes, this is obviously a joke, but I had a hunch that many people actually thought it was a joke for the wrong reason. I figured some people probably saw the original tweet and thought that the joke is that we are not actually anywhere close to 80% of running out of QR codes, but in reality, the joke is that it does not even make sense to apply the concept of running out to QR codes in the first place. And judging by some of the replies to my tweet, I was correct in that assumption. So now I can explain what I actually mean. It seems that there were at least two points of confusion in my tweet. One, there were people who just fundamentally misunderstood how QR codes work and thought that they work like barcodes. And two, people who apparently understood how QR codes work, but were getting needlessly hung up on the semantics of the term run out and were missing my point. So let's go over both. Quick side note, I did make a slight error in my tweet. You can't actually just keep expanding QR codes. They do have a max size, but like I said, that is not even part of my argument anyway. You'll see why. So the first biggest misconception, which is the one I was actually mostly expecting and addressing with my tweet, is that QR codes work the same as barcodes, specifically UPC codes. Barcodes just encode a number, and when you scan it, you have to go look up that number in some database and see what final data it corresponds to. Whereas with QR codes, the actual data is stored as the QR code itself. The QR code is the final data. To elaborate, for the barcodes everyone's familiar with, like on product packaging, those are called UPC, or Universal Product Codes, and there is literally a big centralized database called the GS1 database, where companies buy a large number of UPC code numbers and then use each one for a different product they want to sell. And if a company owns a barcode number, no one else can use it to identify their own products, because obviously the official database will just return the officially registered info. And importantly, because UPC barcodes codes are exactly 12 digits each, and those digits serve only as an identifier in a centrally managed database, it is definitely possible to run out of barcodes. And by that, I mean other companies could eventually buy them all up, even if they aren't necessarily used, and you would not be able to acquire one to use on your own products. Now, yes, of course, you could make your own private database of barcodes for your own use in your own store, but that's beside the point, which is that the barcodes don't actually store any data, they only store an identifier that points to data and therefore have to be centrally managed. Now, when it comes to QR codes, like I touched on, they are fundamentally different. I made a whole video a while ago talking about the technical details, but the quick version is that QR codes are just a fancy way to store text data in image form. Think of it this way. Just like we have different text fonts like Times New Roman or Arial or cursive font, QR codes are in a way just a weird text font specifically made for computers to easily read. This also means that just as if you wrote something down by hand, the rest of the world has no idea when you generate a QR code for something. It's all done right on the device. Heck, if you really wanted, you could read the specification for QR codes and hand draw one from scratch on a piece of paper without generating it on a computer first, and it would work like any other. And if you later did generate a QR code for the same text, it would be the same as the one you drew. Obviously, it would be a different style, but the pattern of dots for the data would be the same. For those curious, technically, there's a bit more going on than just one-to-one -one letters to dots. Like, you can actually choose to generate a QR code with extra information for error correction, so even if parts of the code are obscured, you can still decode the full original text. And also, there are different sizes of QR codes depending on how much data needs to be stored, including the error correction. 
I think for most people, that understanding alone should clarify what I meant in my tweet, but there were still people who simply could not grasp it, apparently getting tripped up on the semantic meaning of terms like run out. Like this person, for example, who I'm not criticizing, they were just asking for clarification. But here's another example. Obviously, they're being humorous and might even be acting willfully ignorant for the joke, but they were implying that what I meant by impossible to run out means that it can somehow infinitely store data, which is not what I said. So hopefully I can better articulate things in video form than I could on Twitter. When I say that it is impossible to run out of QR codes and that the concept of running out does not even apply, what I'm imagining is some alternate universe where you try to use a QR code generator app and it says something like, error, no more QR codes left. Or in other words, in my mind, run out of something means that there is no more of that thing that you are able to use. They're all used up. And I think that's how everyone uses that term. It has to be used with something that inherently can be depleted. And to clarify the other side, I am not in any way, shape, or form talking about running out in the context of trying to store data in an individual QR code. Because yes, in an individual QR code you're making, if you are trying to fit too much data into it, you will run out of space, obviously. But that has nothing to do with my point about it being nonsensical to say we would run out of QR codes themselves. That's like me trying to pack a box and having no more space left in it, and then that somehow being related to the availability of all boxes in the world. They are totally unrelated. Now, going back to the replies, the trouble with internet discussions is that we aren't sitting in front of the other person, so we can't just ask for clarification on their mental models they're working with. For someone like this, who says things like, QR codes are finite, and if every one has been used, you can't make another one, I think it's a safe bet that they are just mistakenly thinking they work like barcodes, so that's easy to explain. Then there were people who were seemingly mistaken on two levels, like this person who I think in addition to thinking QR codes work like barcodes, also therefore misinterpreted my point. He seems to think that we can theoretically run out of QR codes, but it's just that we can't run out in practice. So that doesn't help because you've got people trying to correct others with more wrong information. Some people just tried to ask what I meant in general, and I tried to give an example that if you write down a sentence or a letter, it's not like that sentence is used up. Just like it would be nonsensical to say that we'll eventually run out of sentences if enough books were written. But for this person, for example, I'm not even really sure what they even mean by unique. I had just explained how there can be multiple of the same code, but he then asks if every QR code is unique. And by this, I'm pretty sure he just means deterministic, like a unique input yields a unique output, which is true. And he also seems to bring up the technical limit for an individual QR code like the other people were. So I'm not even sure if he thinks that I'm making a point about the space available in a single QR code, or maybe he still does think that QR codes work like barcodes. I did like this one guy's analogy with the alphabet, how each letter is unique and we'd never run out of them either. And his idea that you can sort of think of every possible QR code as already existing. Though it can be especially tough to know what someone is thinking like here, where they just say, you're wrong, and that's it. So here, you can only guess why they would possibly say that. So I tried to offer an analogy by likening QR codes to tweets, trying to convey that even identical existing tweets don't prevent you from tweeting the same thing someone has already tweeted before even for a different purpose. Of course, some other guy jumped in totally ignoring my point, saying, if every tweet had to be unique, then yes, it literally does mean that you can never tweet again. To which I said, QR codes do not need to be unique. And then the original guy said that, yes, they do have to be unique or they would lose value. Now in hindsight, I think both of these people were simply operating on the assumption that QR codes work the same as barcodes. That would explain everything they're saying, but somehow I didn't realize that at the time. Though when the guy said that QR codes do need to be unique, I did at least realize we were talking about completely different things and it was pointless to just go back and forth. So I tried to just end it there, but he came back with some example that again, makes no sense if you know how QR codes work. And I really didn't feel like first asking him to explain his whole mental model. He did bait me into one final response, but I don't want to dwell. So you can pause if you want to read more thoughts. Next, there's someone like this guy who I first thought was also thinking QR codes were like barcodes because he mentioned something about sequentially running out and reusing the code to direct to a different use. So I wrote a whole thing about how QR codes are not the same as barcodes, but then he just copies something from Google AI, like, come on now. 
At this point, I'm pretty sure he finally comprehended that they're just encoding data, but seemingly doubled down on irrelevant semantics, still trying to convince me that it's still a finite data combination. Like, dude, yes, I know, I'm not saying it stores infinite data. I think he might have been trying to say that if you are personally using QR codes in a certain use case like inventory tracking, such as where the QR code is in numerical mode, so it's basically just a 2D barcode, that in that case, you yourself could run out of QR codes. So imagining theoretically someone in their own massive warehouse with quintillions of boxes ran out of QR codes or something. If that's the point he was getting at, okay, I see the thinking, but that is still not relevant to my original point because no one else in the world would be affected by this one person and their warehouse. Him using every single possible QR code does not mean that those QR codes are used up no one even knows that those QR codes exist. They make no difference. I think I've given enough examples at this point, but all I intended was a fun fact, no consequence. It really doesn't matter. So please do not argue about this down in the comments. This video is not meant as an invitation to debate because there's nothing to debate. It's just a fun fact. And to be clear, I'm not criticizing or trying to insult the people who I showed their tweets. I was really just trying to understand their thinking because again, Twitter's not the best way to actually explain what you're thinking and correct that. So don't go harassing people or calling people stupid on Twitter. That's not the point. But still, in any case, let me know if you knew about this already and we could talk about that down in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, absolutely demolish and annihilate the like button into the shadow realm. I do check the like dislike ratios on videos. And if you wanna keep watching, here's a video where I talk about what is the Windows test mode. And if you see that, it's actually a very bad thing. So I'll put that link right there you can click on. And if you wanna subscribe, I try to make videos about twice a week, so it should be worth it. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.